So you really did it. I can't believe it. You did that? Yep. Hey, this is Michelle Spiber, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom, and I want to welcome you to today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. Y'all, we're going to keep it light today, and I just want to ask you, what are you willing to risk it all on? Come on over to the flip and let's check it out. Today, we're going to mix it up a little bit and just keep it real light and airy. And I was laughing because um, I actually had a conversation with somebody. We were talking about some crazy stuff. And I was like, you know what? I want to ask y'all, what are you willing to risk it all on? You see, that's a a saying uh, right now where, you know, people are talking about, um, you know, I would, I would risk it all for, for that, whether it be a relationship or acquiring something or something like that, or better yet, let me put it this way. This is another street term. See, I'm, I'm helping y'all today. What are you willing to take a penitentiary chance on? Yeah, that's another one. I want to ask you that. And the reason why is because just even entertaining that, to me, helps me to get a better feel for where I am right now and what it is that gets me going, gets my verve, you know, engaged. And it's just wonderful being able to go to that area without risking it all, without taking a penitentiary chance on it. And so I was like, yeah, that is something that I could really, I can, I can really get into. And not for nothing, I'll say that one of the things that I loved about my conversation with this person was that it brought up new avenues of things that I would be willing to do. And I was like, okay, all right. And I, I left the conversation feeling renewed, inspired, and those types of things. And so I kind of want to put it this way. Where do you go when the edge of your thinking is allowed to roam and wander? Where are you willing to take what you know about yourself to uh, unchartered territory? Where are you willing to venture if you could go into the gray area of your life with a tethering cord, knowing that you could come back or better yet, like James Baldwin says, are you willing to go and consult the letters in a region of your mental basement? You know, I like that one as well. So I'm not going to tell you uh, what I came up with when I talked about what would I be willing to risk it all on or take a penitentiary chance on. But what I will say is that the tame version of that, what child, I'm willing to do that. I can do that in the now. And so I, I just think it's like an amazing thing. And it got me into a different headspace uh, because we can get, even though it's not a rut, but we can get into a narrow region of how we think and then get the audacity to be stupid enough to believe that this is the only way we should think mm-hmm. uh, or the things we do. And then don't realize that we have squandered away so many years, opportunities, and um, evolutions that we could have had because we were so busy, willing to stay in our lane, play us safe, and rest assured in what we're doing as right. Now, there are um, studies that show that the longer you do something, the longer you uh, stay within um, a certain prescribed uh, bandwidth of activity, belief, and, and, and being, get this, the more, quote unquote, conservative you become. And I am not talking about a, a political conservation. I'm, I'm actually just talking about you narrow your actions, your belief systems, and your um, your your willingness to explore to a safe zone. Oh yeah, 
to a safe zone. So even if you think you are a wild child, even if you think you're a contrarian against the grain or whatever, the longer you stay in whatever vein you've been in, the more conservative you you become, the more you start to uh, internally, unconsciously self-edit to be as safe as possible to do what? to be able to stay in that vein. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's, that's very interesting. And the reason why I found it to be very interesting is because of the idea or the notion that we, we, you know, the, the, the narratives that we tell ourselves that, oh yeah, I'm a forward thinker or I'm this, or I'm that. Yeah, and still, you are still behaving the way anybody else would on an opposite spectrum of you. And to think, even in your quote unquote wildness, you're doing things to play safe in your wildness. And um, I talked about one of the books that I I read uh, growing up. Uh, called Where the Wild Things Are and Max. Oh, good old little Max having a hissy fit before dinner and being sent to his room and him venturing off to this land of monsters where he becomes the king and all this kind of stuff. And it reading it as a kid is a totally different experience when you revisit it as an adult to see all the subtext and the layerings and the wisdoms that are in um, the concept of that book book. And the funny thing was, is it was a circular argument. So let me, um, if y'all will permit me, since we just, you know, talking today, um, as an author, I would hope that I'm continuing to study and become better at my craft uh, with each day in each book that I I write. And um, because of that, um, in my bag of tricks and skills, I tend to want to step my game up with each book. And um, when I, so like when I was first uh, starting to write, I wrote the stories that I thought were the way you wrote stories. And then I built upon it and upon it. But there is one uh, kind of story that people are taught when they're wanting to start writing and it's called the hero's journey. And what the hero's journey is, is if you were to um, graph it out uh, geometrically, it is a circular story where it brings you back to the point where you started, hopefully changed or evolved. And the story where the wild things are is a circular story. It brings our protagonist, Max, back to where he was before, instead of being an incorrigible little boy who is acting up, he is very thankful for being back home in that bedroom with his family uh, and being having that air of, of gratitude evolves him. And <clears throat> he is never going to be the little boy he was before the journey. And when I look at this, this, uh, this um, hilarious practice now where people are entertaining, what would I be willing to risk it all on? You know, what would I be willing to take a penitentiary chance on? It's a way to do what Max did and go to the land of the monsters, knowing that I'm tethered and I can come back. And hopefully when I come back, I'm a more evolved person, the better for the journey. And I am enjoying, when I tell you enjoying, I am enjoying how these exercises are causing me to grow and uh, to become more. Um, And like I said before, with the conversation that I had with the person, I realized that, hmm, I might not be willing to do that, but I can do this. And because of that, I'm actually going to be doing something that's out of the norm for me. You know, so doing these exercises for me is a way to keep our ourselves from going stale or going too quote unquote safe, conservative in how we live our life and being able to reignite the charge and the excitement about getting up every day, about having purpose and drive and tenacity and being able to be the best person we can be in that day. 
Yes, we're going to have challenges and friction and all that. And it is going to make us stronger and all this kind of stuff. But my mama used to say that all work and no fun makes Jill or Jack a doll girl or boy. And you don't want to be dull. You don't want to be dull. Um, another thing about being willing or daring to um, have that exercise and allow yourself to go through that is it turns on or flips the switch the switch to allow us to enjoy the wanderlust of life. Now studies have shown that there are some people who are inherently more prone to the wanderlust spirit than others. They even say that supposedly they have found the genetic composition for people who tend to be more adventurous without a destination. So let me let me go back and set that up the right way. A wanderer or to have the wanderlust means that you seek adventure without a objective, a destination or a goal. You go truly for the um, impact of the journey. You get on the road without knowing where you're going to end up. You take the reins off of control to allow what happens to happen. And that is a brilliant thing because I'm going to tell you, if you, if you, if you take my suggestion today and you ask yourself and you realistically do it, what would you be willing to risk it all on to do or to go after? What would you be willing to take a penitentiary chance on? Meaning, what would you be willing to go to jail for if it meant going to jail to get it? You know, what would you be willing to do if you had to lose it all? That brings us right smack dab up to our control issues. And that's another reason why I'm loving this. Because that simple little conversation, that simple little exercise, because you best believe I went and did some journaling about it. And I'm continuing to root it out. Because I was like, oh my gosh, thank you, wisdom. I'm starting to see un, um, 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 un, un, um, hidden, uh, revealed areas of control in my life that I didn't know that I had just by doing this little exercise. I was like, oh my gosh, that is so true. And I'm able to, uh, now cut the cords, if you will, of some things that no longer serve me that I was just, you know, kind of, sort of, um, using, I I should say, you know, using uh, as crutches to, you guessed it, stay conservative, stay in my lane so that I can always do the stuff that I think rewards and and reinforces who I think I am. And not for nothing, doing these, these little you know, little fun little exercises, I'm finding, I'm enjoying it, that it's causing me to uh, do renovations on my personality, do renovations on who I am, what I believe, and evolving me into someone that I'm finding fun again. Now, I'm not saying that I was bored. I wasn't. I wasn't bored with myself uh, because, honey, I'm going to tell you, when it comes to me, I make me laugh. I'm my best friend. I enjoy spending time with me. And now, just even going through this little exercise and taking it serious enough to do it, I am finding even more cool things that I want to explore as a part or a new expression of who I am. And it's helping me to identify those areas where I have control issues, where I need to let go so that I can rock it off into the next level and that I won't have so much of the gravitational pull on me of trying to stay in control of everything. Because I'm going to tell you, whenever you go somewhere new, let me just ask you this. When you go somewhere new, you've never been before. And especially if there is no point of reference, meaning you don't know what to expect, how much control do you have? That's the main reason why a lot of folks, the longer they stay in their uh, their range or, or where they live, you know, and where they go, the less comfortable, the less willing they are, they're willing to travel outside. 
Have you ever seen someone, they live in a, you know, fairly metropolitan area and their, their world slowly shrinks down to the 30 miles around them. That's the, you know, as far as they're willing to drive in a day in the traffic is the consistency of their world. And you tell them, oh, we, we need to go here or we need to go there. And anxiety um, and uncomfortableness and fidgetiness sets in. And they're like, um, um, you know, it's that is the kind of stuff I'm talking about when I talk about breaking out of the rote behaviors, routine behaviors, the rituals, you know, think about it. If you only have up to 10 places that you're willing to eat out um, and that's what you've been doing for a year or more, stop the madness. Get outside of that. Be willing to risk it on trying out a new place. Now, don't you write me and say, Michelle, I tried a new place. It was a horrible thing. (laughs) Don't you write me. Nope, nope, nope. Don't you dare. But I do want you to be willing to get off of the, uh, the beaten track. Take a side track. Take a day trip. I'm, I'll, I'm going to say that to you guys. Doing that um, exercise, that's one of the things I'm going to start doing. I'm, um, I actually can't say that that was new. When I was younger, <clears throat> you know, and, more, and, and, and very adventurous, I would just do that. I would just jump in the car and take a day trip and go somewhere. And so I'm going to be doing that again and doing some more um, things. Now, I am not willing to risk it all and do stuff that's going to drive my insurance up because of risky behavior. I'm not there yet, y'all. I don't know if I'm ever going to get there. But what I am going to say is there are things that I was able to uh, reacquaint myself with and things that I'm w- I'm actually willing to try and experience because of just asking myself that question. What am I willing to risk it all on? What am I willing to put my money where my mouth is. Yeah. And I, you know what? I don't, I don't like daring anybody to do anything. I'm just going to strongly encourage you to dip your toe in the pool of what ifs. Dip your toe in the pool of um, uncertainty of the unknown and embrace it knowing that you're going to be able to do this and that it's going to open up new options and new opportunities in your life. But I do want to I do want to talk to you a little bit more about the wanderlust spirit and what we can learn from it. The, just my <laughs> my mom when uh we were growing up, I think I've told you this before on another podcast. She used to love to go garage sale shopping. She was not an antiquer or any of that kind of stuff, but she loved finding little kitschkas and little deals on things. And um, that was her joy and that was her bliss. And when I look back on it with um, adult eyes, seasoned in experience, I now understand that my mother was avant-garde. Because she didn't wait around and let her world close down into her. She would go out and she would explore. And at the time when I was young, and we had these things called penny savers, and they're still around. And you can still find this stuff as of right now. But um, people would list their garage sales, their estate sales and the like in the paper. And she would get the different papers and she would plot out her route and she would hit the ones that she knew she wanted to hit, but she always left uh, and she was an early bird getting up and hitting the ones she wanted to hit. So she could quote unquote, get the stuff that wasn't picked over. And it would be so funny. Cause she was like, I don't want the stuff. Everybody's put their little grimy hands on. And I'm like, ma, you do realize that this has been in somebody's house forever. And people have put their grimy hands on it. But anyway, she would just shush me. Uh, but she would leave time to go exploring. And there were great things that she would find. I remember one time she found um, this lady who sold cosmetics and things out of a trailer. And what the lady would do is she would go and she would buy lots, L-O-T-S, lots of uh, merchandise that would have uh, cosmetics in them. So it was a hodgepodge. You never knew what you were getting. But you could not tell my mother she had not found the ultimate treasure. 
She would make sure that she would go by there. She would take us by there. And there would be bins and bins and bins of discontinued makeup, brand new, still in the packaging and all that kind of stuff, of course, that she would get for pennies. And my, my mother didn't wear makeup like that. It was the funniest thing, but she would get so much joy out of it. And I thought about that when I was like, what am I willing to risk it all on? Um, I don't want to go buy a whole bunch of discontinued makeup just for the thrill of doing it. But what I do want to do is I want to get outside of my comfort zone. I want to employ the wonderlust spirit that my mother had um, to go explore and to change up things. Now, studies have shown that when you veer outside of your routine uh, more than, and I should have had it pulled up, but when you veer outside of your routine um, more than a few gradients, it causes kind of like a, a, a reverb feedback where you start getting anxious. But if you do something, okay, I, I got it here. It's called reconsolidation. And it started off with them working with people uh, to heal uh, trauma by remembering things with a slightly different outcome or something different in it so that they could begin to heal. And what they found was, is when if you want to teach someone to do something faster or have a different behavior, you use this reconsolidation uh, where whatever they do, you cause them to do something a little bit differently. I've spoken about it before where um, they were trying to get people to uh, find a new reason to love things they were doing. And I talked about the experiment where they had people who love popcorn but we're kind of mad on it now. They had uh, the regular control group, eat the popcorn however you want to eat it. Then they had a group that they told them to eat the popcorn one kernel at a time. But then they had a group where they gave them chopsticks and said, eat one kernel with the chopsticks one at a time. And the chopsticks group uh, were... Uh, group was the ones who uh, had the biggest... Um, response to the exercise. And so when you do the wanderlusting, you start from a point of home and it's where you're not going so far out that you start causing this reverb or this, this dissonance in, and, and, you know, and you start having internal anxiety and fighting yourself. It's more of a controlled situation where you start to see your world anew. And that was what I started to realize when I was playing this exercise and having this conversation with someone about what would you be willing to risk it all on? And I was like, hmm, thank you for that wisdom smack. Because you're right. I don't have to go do the extreme and cause myself all these issues. But what I can do is I can start with increments and small little degrees to explore, expand, and reacquaint myself with things I loved in the past and thus getting me closer and closer to doing things that I want to do in the future. And because of that, I can I can hear in my in my world. I hear uh, uh, sacred cows tipping over and cracking, never to try to come up again to fool me into this is the best you know your life can be. Because I really enjoy my life. Let me, don't 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 get it wrong. I enjoy my life. I enjoy me. I enjoy the person I am. And I get to have even more. I get to experience even more. And I get to be so much more grateful for the ability to do it, the good health, the uh, mental facility, and the um, the business dexterity to be able to do these things. And so I'm going to take advantage of it. And I want to challenge you if I can, I want to challenge you to do it. So today or, you know, this weekend or whatever, because if you're listening to this, when it first comes out, it's the weekend. I want you to challenge yourself to do the exercise. Maybe you do it by yourself and you just write things out, or maybe you have a conversation like I did. I liked the conversation because the person knew me so well that 
And likewise, we challenged each other to really get down to some real areas of risking it all, taking a penitentiary chance. And it was so affirming, so delightful. I even thought about that book, Where the Wild Things Are, when I was going through that exercise, because I learned so much about going through it and understanding that for me and for most folks, we need that tether back to home base. We need to know that I can do this, but I can always go back in the circle as the hero coming back to the same point changed for the better. And not and not only that, I can go and explore um, and have the spirit of wanderlust that leads me to different areas um, that helps me so I don't get stuck in a rut only traveling in a 30 mile circumference of where I live and thinking that that's the world. And it's just a wonderful way that is not so demanding because too many times when we're trying to make change, when we're trying to continue to grow, we go to the extreme and we be doing too much. Let's just be honest. But with this way, it's very gentle, subtle, but effective. And who would have thought it would come from just asking, what are you willing to risk it all on? And then working back from that. And that's the thing. You guys be willing to work back from the extreme But don't land back into your conservatively controlled area. Even if you think you are a contrarian and that you are pushing the envelope, you probably aren't. You're probably pushing the envelope the same way you always have. And thus, you know exactly how far to go before it causes you discomfort. Or if you are one of those sadists who likes inflicting discomfort on others, you still know how far to go. So it does not become a penitentiary chance. And so I'm I'm just I'm just delight delightfully happy to share this little exercise with you because I did promise that as I'm going through things uh in my journey that I'll share the wisdoms that are that I'm starting to explore. Oh, and before I let you go, I just want to re- remind you too that when you start to do this exercise, things are going to come up. And if you find yourself uh, saying, nah, you know, or, or shooting down every single thing that comes up, look at your control issues. Look and see how firmly you are grasping your existing life in your hand for dear life. Look and see how rigid you are and check and see When is the last time you did something out of the ordinary? Okay, because that is going to help you to identify not only the areas where you have control issues, but it's going to help identify some fears and some hauntings (laughs) that are trying to hide in the recesses of the darkness of your mind. Remember, James Baldwin said he consulted a letter in the recesses of his mind to go and investigate the things he needed to address. I love, I love James Baldwin. Check him out. You can even check him out um, on YouTube and things. But anyway, um, doing these types of things, shaking it up makes you more excited to be you. And I'm going to say there is an after effect too. When you do this exercise and you start working on things that you can realistically do to to change up the, the mix, it's an amazing thing. When you go out amongst people, they can even sense it around you. You get more smiles because you look and feel uh, happier to be around. You know, there's a joy about you that emanates be- be- going way before you. And it's a pleasure to be in your company because you're feeling good about your new world, your new life and what you've got going on. And so I just really kind of challenge and encourage you. I don't want to dare you. I just want to challenge you. Go down the little path and ask yourself, what are you willing to risk it all on? What would you be willing to take a penitentiary chance on? And then once you do that, you don't have to go do the extreme, walk it back a little bit so that you can do 
little incremental things off the beaten path to break out of the mold and the confines of your world, your conservative views of what you are and what you do. And I guarantee you, you are going to enjoy it. Okay. So guess what? Yes, my time is up. Who knew? Thank you for yours. This has been Michelle Spiva, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom with another Wisdom Smack and a, another episode. And so thank you and check the show notes. And guess what? Yep, I'm going to see you tomorrow. Y'all have a lovely, lovely day. And um, keep them coming with the comments. If you want have any questions you'd like for me to answer, let me know in the show notes. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. And that's going to do it for today's podcast of Wisdom Smack with Michelle Spiva. If you like this podcast, please help us get the word out. Like, comment, subscribe, and even share. And if you really like it, please help us continue to get the word out by considering using this show's link for Amazon. So when you want to go to Amazon and you do all of your general shopping, Uh, please use michellespiva.com forward slash AMZ. It's simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And this show might receive a little bit of commission that will go towards helping to further get these episodes out to you and to others. So thank you so much for listening. This has been Michelle Spiva with Wisdom Smack. Bye.